let us see about half control rectifier or semiconverter in this video this is the diagram of a semiconverter fed dc motor which is widely used in industries so what is this full wave bridge converter so here you have a term full wave so what is half wave in one cycle of 2 pi if you get only one pulse it is called half wave so full wave means in one cycle if you get two waveforms it is called a full wave so what is a full wave bridge converter so the converter which gives full wave output it is called a full wave converter and if the converter is connected in a bridge fashion then we call it as a full wave bridge converter there are three converters which can give you this type of output full wave output one is the uncontrolled rectifier which we have discussed in chapter 21 and fully controlled rectifier which we have discussed in chapter 24 and in this video we will be talking about half control converter or semi converter so all these three converters are able to produce this type of waveform that is full wave output waveform so full wave converter and fully controlled converter don't get confused all these three converters can give you a full wave output these three are classified based upon whether you will get a controlled output or not. So as the name suggests in uncontrolled rectifier diodes are used. We know that diodes are uncontrolled devices. So whatever you give the input it will start conduction if it is forward biased. So you don't have any control over the output voltage. So diodes are cheaper compared to thyristors. Next if we see a fully controlled rectifier, it is fully controlled. So we will be using thyristors. So by changing the firing angle, you can control the output voltage. So this fully controlled rectifier has a wide control over the DC output voltage that is you can vary the output voltage from 0 to plus V naught as well as 0 to minus V naught. And this has two modes of operation one is called rectifier mode and another one is the inverter mode where you will be feeding the power from the load to the source. Next is the half control rectifier or semi converter which is a combination of both uncontrolled rectifier and fully controlled rectifier. So you have two thyristors, so thyristors and two diodes. So two thyristors from here and two diodes from here. So this will form a semi converter. So two SER and two diodes are used but they have a limited control because you have diodes here. And this converter can operate only in rectifier mode. First we should know why you, we need a half control converter or semi converter. We have a diode converter which is a cheaper option. And if you don't want to control the output, you can use a diode rectifier. But if you want to control the output, you can go for a fully controlled converter like this. Why do you need a half control converter? A fully controlled converter can act as a rectifier where the voltage will be positive and power will be positive. It means that power will be delivered from the source to load. And it can also act as an inverter when the voltage um, reverses that is minus V naught you will get and um, power flows from AC sorry DC to AC. 
but some applications may not require this inverter mode of operation so in such applications having four thyristor because when you have thyristor you need a gate circuit and gate circuit will have some losses also so when you don't need this inverter operation if you have this uh, extra thyristors and associated gate circuit it is costly so instead of that you can replace these two thyristors by diode so that you can eliminate this inverter mode as well as reduce the cost of the circuit so that's why we go for a half control converter or semi converter next let us see about the half converter quadrant of operation we can see that uh, this half converter or uh, semi converter produce only plus v not and i not will be uh, always positive because uh, ser and diodes are unidirectional devices and if we see fully control converter it can produce output plus v not as well as minus v not so this is called a two quadrant converter so now we are going to see only about this one quadrant converter or half converter so this half converter has two configuration one is called symmetrical configuration and another one is asymmetrical configuration so symmetrical configuration if you take one leg you will have one thyristor and one diode next leg also one thyristor and one diode so this is called symmetrical configuration in asymmetrical configuration you have two thyristors in the same leg and two diodes on the next leg so this configuration is different from this one but if you see the operation and output waveform both will be same only one difference is there that is the conduction period in this case will be the conduction period of each device that is thyristor and diode if you see it will be same but in this case diode will be conducted conducting for a longer time period compared to thyristors so the device rating will be slightly different from this case let us see about the symmetrical configuration so here i have taken continuous conduction mode where the load current is assumed to be continuous that is it will not become zero at any instant now you have four devices here two are diodes and two are thyristors so thyristors will be turned on when it is forward biased and when a gate pulse is given diodes will be turned on as soon as they are forward biased so if you see here these two diodes d2 will be forward biased during positive half cycle and d4 will be forward biased at pi that is during negative half cycle and this t1 will be forward biased during positive half cycle but you should get alpha when you give firing pulse only it will get turned on so when you should give alpha when this vm sign alpha is greater than this e because it is a rle load if this e you have to make vm sin alpha greater than e so that t1 will be forward biased again t3 uh, firing pulse is given at pi plus alpha so let us see the modes of operation so there are four modes of operation first one we are considering from alpha to pi so in this interval that is the positive half cycle so this is positive this is minus so for t1 i have given the gate pulse so t1 will conduct and during positive half cycle diode d2 will be 
turned on automatically because it is forward biased. So current flows through the load in this direction. So V0 will be equal to Vs. So next case. So here we have finished till pi. So after pi negative half cycle starts. So this is minus and it is plus. So now we are considering the interval pi to pi plus alpha. Because pi plus alpha only we will give the gate pulse to T3. But during negative half cycle D4 will be forward biased because this is connected to negative. So D4 will be forward biased and D2 will turn off. So initially D2 was conducting. Now this current will start to flow through D4. So now current is flowing in this way. This thyristor will not get turned off automatically because it is not reverse biased. Only when this T3 is turned on or gate pulse is given, this will reverse bias this T1 and T1 will get turned off because we have assumed a continuous conduction mode. See, if it is a discontinuous conduction mode or if the load current becomes zero, thyristor will turn off automatically. But if it is a continuous conduction mode, T1 will not turn off at pi. It continues to carry the load current till it is reverse biased by the newly turned on T3. So only when T3 is turned on, T1 will go off in case of continuous conduction mode. So now you can see that the load is directly connected to this leg. So it is not connected to the supply. Now there is no use of supply. Actually the load current is freewheeling through this leg 1. So actually it is a short. Two devices are on means it is actually a short. So load current is flowing here and output voltage will be 0 in this case. Next mode, we will take pi plus alpha to 2 pi. So in this case, pi plus alpha is negative cycle. So again D4 is already in conduction. And now you are given gate pulse at pi plus alpha. So T3 and D4 will conduct. So in this way, so output voltage is equal to minus Vs. Next cycle. So again it is a positive half cycle because 2 pi to 2 pi plus alpha it is a positive half cycle. So D2 will come into conduction and current flows through T3 D2 or it free wheels in this period. So output voltage will be 0. So these are the four modes of operation. Now let us draw the diagram waveform. So the supply voltage, I have drawn the supply voltage and E give alpha always greater than this crossover point so that device will be forward biased. So alpha is given here and pi plus alpha here. So at alpha give the pulse for T1 and for at pi plus alpha give it for T3. So this is the uh, table have taken from the previous modes of operation for which period which two devices are conducting and what is the output voltage. So if you know this you can draw the waveform easily. So alpha 2 pi T1 and D2. So alpha 2 pi you draw this box alpha 2 pi T1 D2 and this freewheeling period T1 and D4 output voltage will be 0. Again from pi plus alpha to 2 pi T3 D4 and remaining period it is 0. So let us draw the output voltage waveform. So 
alpha 2 pi you are getting voltage as VAB. So here start your waveform at alpha, trace the input waveform till pi. So alpha 2 pi output voltage is equal to VAB, I have drawn it. Next pi 2 pi plus alpha output voltage is 0. So which is pi plus alpha? This point. So till that make it 0. And again pi plus alpha to 2 pi it should be VBA. So VBA is here. So follow that waveform. So again repeat it. So now this is 0. So I have drawn the output waveform. Next we will draw the output current waveform. So current is starting from alpha. We have taken continuous conduction mode. So start the current from some value at alpha. It should increase till this one that is till E crossover point. Then it starts to decrease after it. that is free wheeling period it should decrease then increase okay okay this is the output waveform let us calculate the average voltage now so v average is equal to 1 by 2 pi integral of um, the limits are alpha 2 by so we are multiplying by 2 because you get two output pulses in one have one cycle so v naught is vm sin omega t simplify it you will get the equation now if you substitute alpha equal to 0 v naught is cos 0 is 1 so you will get 2 vm by pi so cos 90 is 0 so you will get v naught equal to vm by pi cos 180 is minus 1 so you will get 0 so let us now plot this one v naught and alpha so you need uh, 2 vm by pi vm by pi 0 then minus 2 vm by pi so this is green color one is for the fully controlled converter which we have studied earlier this is for semi-converter that is 2 Vm by pi, Vm by pi and at 180 degree it becomes 0. So you can, this fully controlled converter can act as a rectifier as well as inverter whereas semi-converter for the whole firing angle 0 to 180 degree you can vary the output and you will get a positive voltage only. So the, the points to remember here are half control rectifier uses two ACR and two diodes and in a half control converter the output voltage is always positive hence you can get only rectifier mode of operation. For the same firing angle this hemi converter gives higher output voltage compared to a fully controlled converter. These are some of the references. If you like the video, please do subscribe to Read Electric Vehicle channel. Thank you.